is a picture perfect night for baseball in the Buckeye State. Nothing but blue skies and bright sunshine in downtown Cincinnati. The first of two here, the first of four overall between the in-state rivals. Interleague baseball, the Indians take on the Cincinnati Reds. And look who's back, Chris Welsh, along with Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball. Nice to have you back tonight, my friend. And, Thank you. You know, Joey Votto, so frequently in this Sabre metrics age, we talk about so many other numbers when you zero in on Joey Votto. Tonight, we're talking about Joey Votto, home runs and RBIs off to the best start since his 2010 MVP season. You know, people who come into town, Tom, and you know, you see it, broadcasters come in, other scouts come into town, they say, well, who's really hot? And I have to tell them that Joey Votto is seeing the ball and is more impressive at the plate than I've ever seen him before. He is locked in. He's one of the toughest outs in baseball anyway. But when he's seeing the ball the way he is right now, he's using the ballpark for home runs. His opposite field power is all over the place. He's also hit some mammoth home runs to center into right field so it's not only about walks this year for Joey Votto it is about doing some damage you see his numbers in 42 career games against the Cleveland Indians very very good 33 runs batted in let's talk about the Indians they were the American League champions a season ago of course they blew a three games to one lead in the World Series to the Cubs they feel like they're armed and ready to make another big run here in 2017. I don't think they put it all together no. yet. I, I think Indians fans and even Indians coaches will tell you the same thing that they just haven't really hit on all cylinders yet. You know, their earned run average of their starters and they've got a good starting staff is not really all that good. Their bullpen, though, is the best in all of baseball. So if the Reds expect to win some ball games, they better have the lead after the fifth or sixth inning because this bullpen can shut you down. And I think it's a team that can be very patient at the plate, too power up and down the lineup. They don't steal a lot of bases. They do their damage with the bats. And Francisco Lindor, we have waited for this young man to blossom. And boy, does he ever do that. Last season against the Reds, over 500, three doubles, a home run, five ribbies. He can do it all. Plus, he's one of the best infielders you're going to see out there in the Keystone combo playing shortstop. All right, when we come back, to another guy who's been mighty impressive. That's Scott Shevlin. And our main man, Jim Day, is standing by with that and so much more.
Cincinnati Reds baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by Chevy. Check out their award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili. Feeling good, it's Skyline time. Fans, local club news meteorologist John Gum here. It looks like a nice night for baseball, although it is going to be a little bit cool. The Indians coming into town, they're having a good season so far. Temperatures, they're going to be uh, in the mid-60s for the first pitch, going down into the low 60s by the final out. Partly cloudy skies tonight at Great American Ballpark. Enjoy the game right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Well, the Reds have certainly scored enough runs to be successful this year, and even over their last nine games in which they've struggled, they're averaging more than six runs a game. The resurgent offense due in part to Scott Shebler maturing as a hitter and playing long ball as well. He's tied with the team lead with Joey Votto, 12 home runs, and those 12 home runs this season have come in 149 at-bats. Last season, he had just nine home runs and 257 at-bats, and he seems to be very streaky as well with these home runs. They usually come back-to-back -back games. In fact, check out our IGS bringing the energy. Fourth time that he has hit a home run in back-to-back -back games. That is the second most in Major League Baseball behind only Ryan Zimmerman, he's done it five times. How about back to back to back? Scheller would like that. Battle of Ohio, part one, Tomlin versus Feldman. Lineups and first pitch are next with Tom Brinkman and Chris Welch. Set to make his 10th start as a Cincinnati Red in the first of four interleague baseball tonight. The Reds getting together with the Cleveland Indians. Take a look at Terry Francona's starting lineup presented by Menards. It'll be Kipnis, Francisco Lindor, and Michael Brantley healthy again. Santana in right, the one time Red. Edwin Encarnacion, his first season with the tribe, and Jose Ramirez at third. Chisholm Hall Gomes coming off his best day of the year and Josh Tomlin is on the mound. So digging in is Kipnis first pitch swinging rolled foul strike one and this one is underway. Mr. Welsh very nice to have you back after a big weekend in South Bend Indiana. Well it was a great weekend Tom thank you very much. Sorry you couldn't pull out more than uh, one out of three against the Rockies but yep. uh, we'll see if the Reds can't get it on track here against the Indians. Quickly 0 and 2. 
The numbers presented by Mazda on Scott Feldman. What's he need to do to become a little bit more consistent? Live on the corners and not pitch out of the strike zone as much. You see the number of walks that he has 20 walks in 50 innings. For a veteran pitcher like Feldman, that's too many. And that's where it's gotten him in, into trouble. But his walks seem to come in streaks. So maybe this will be one of those games where he's by, able to find the strike zone. Well, you're right about that. He had two starts this year where he walked 10 batters, and those were both against the same team, the Milwaukee Brewers. And then he had control issues for the third time this year, his last outing, most recent outing, which lasted all of two and two thirds innings against Chicago. But a nice start here tonight. Four pitches, three strikes, and gone is Kipper. Pretty good curveball right here for Feldman, and that's really his signature pitch. I mean, he throws a sinking fastball, a changeup, and a curve, but that curveball is the one that he relies on for swings and misses. Nice downward rotation. He spikes it a little bit. You'll see his index finger just kind of crooked up on it a little bit when we show it to you in slow motion. Cleveland has won six in a row against the Reds, which matches Cleveland's longest winning streak ever against Cincinnati as Lindor digs in and looks at ball one. Cleveland swept naturally all four games last year, and they've taken nine of ten since the beginning of the 2015 season. As you'll notice when you look at a lot of the numbers from many of these Cleveland batters very few of them have you know really gotten it going offensively so far this year the starting pitching as Chris mentioned a moment ago has been up and down along with some injuries to some key performers Corey Kluber and Carlos Carrasco most recently but their bullpen has been lights out if they get a lead they have not lost a game from the sixth inning on. But they're coming off their best series of the year over the weekend. They went down to Houston and swept the team with the best record in all of baseball three in a row. And back to back strikeouts to begin the game by Scott Feldman. It's on defense presented by Ford, the regular cast of characters back in there tonight after an off day yesterday for Zach Kozart. And Tucker Barnhart hangs aside. Devin Mezzarocco looked very good at the plate over the weekend. For those of you that weren't with us, he knocked in two runs, had two hits, scored twice Saturday, then yesterday had two more hits, was on base three times. Maybe starting to come around a little bit is Mezzarocco. Now Brantley, strike one. Brantley, a top three finisher in the league's most valuable player balloting two years ago, but injured his shoulder and wound up missing virtually all of last season. And they're thrilled to have him back. He was their best player before he got hurt. There's no doubt about it. And he, he might be their best player now. I mean, after all, he is hitting in the number three spot. And a lot of people were wondering if he would ever be able to come back because the shoulder injury that he had, it was one of those that you really could hamper your career. As far as being an elite player, it's not been really that much of a problem so far for Brantley. They took him along very slowly. We saw very little bit of him in spring training. Brantley is one of those hitters that is very quiet at the plate. And every once in a while you'll see him move his hands just a little bit just to try to keep a little bit of rhythm going. This time he bangs the ball right off of his front foot. Oh make that the shin. Well, most of the time if you're wearing one of those shin guards up there it means you've already been hit once. And it's like putting a bullseye on it. Feldman has made six starts in his career against Cleveland. He's pitched in 15 games overall. Now the tribe is four and two in the game started by Feldman. As he fans the side. What a start for Scott Feldman. Chris Welsh, you heard it from him before the game started. He had a good feeling about Feldman tonight. So far, real good.
There are one, two, three, top half for Scott Feldman. We look at the red starting lineup tonight. Billy Hamilton in center. Zach Kozart in short. Joey Votto will bat third. Adam Duvall, the cleanup hitter. Suarez at third. Shepler in right. A ladder third of Peraza, Barnhart, and Feldman against Josh Tomlin, who had a terrible month of April, but then put together back to back great starts before a disastrous outing is in the most recent time. Well, he's a guy that I think is the bottom of the rotation type of pitcher, although he's a really good competitor. He's going to go out there and, and really battle every inning that he's out there. But I'm not sure the expectations are around Josh Tomlin as it would be, say, around Corey Kluber. Right now, though, I've got to tell you that it is very difficult to see. We see this really beginning in late, mid to late May, on any sunny day here, probably until late July. The, the batter's eye, because of the way the sun sets over the stadium, makes it very difficult. This area over here, I mean, this is what a batter looks at. And you're trying to find the seams of a baseball and decipher the spin, uh, the speed of the ball, having coming out of the pitcher's hand. And, and we didn't see very good swings at all against Feldman in the top of the first inning when he struck out the side. I don't expect to see, you know, much more here for a couple of innings because, boy, oh, boy, this is bad. Now, these used to be panels of glass that the Reds have since been able to cover with some tarps. That's helped a little bit. And no sooner do I see that guy lines the base hit. Maybe Billy has x-ray vision in addition to being very speedy. Perhaps he does. Now this is a big story in this game tonight because think about this for a minute. You go all the way back to when divisional play started in 1969 in Major League Baseball. Not a single pitcher has shut down the running game better than Josh Thompson. The lowest stolen bases allowed per nine innings of any pitcher that has taken the mound since 1969. And look at Hamilton's lead. It's not even two steps over there. Now he'll extend it. But you wonder, will the game's very best stealer try and swipe one against the game's very best guy of shutting it down? Well, you can see Tomlin is very compact to the plate. The other thing he does is that he starts with his feet slightly open, meaning they're pointed towards the Reds dugout a little bit. A lot of right handed pitchers do the exact opposite and they make it very difficult to throw to first base. He also has a very wide base and that enables him to have a quick step move to first base because he's already gaining ground towards the first base bag. His feet are the key right here. And this is what I'm talking about. The line that is kind of diagonal there instead of going down straight to down towards home plate. He does slightly close it up, but he's still open. In the air down the right field line. That'll be easy for Santana. One out. Well, you say easy for Santana, but he's not used to playing out there. Drive on defense presented by Ford. The one time red Edwin Encarnacion. What a career he has had since leaving Cincinnati. It's his first year with the Indians. It's a good, solid team. Let's get back to Josh Tomlin for a second, the way he shuts down the running game. You know, he throws over to first base as much or more than any other starting pitcher in all of baseball. 202 throwovers, not including tonight, since the beginning of last year. Quick feed of the key. <laughs> Hamilton running, Vado puts it in play. They'll stay out of the double play. Two out. Don't see the Reds play hit and run much with Joey Votto at the plate. We don't know for sure if that was a hit and run. Sure had the look to it though. No, I don't think there's any way in the world it would be a hit and run with Votto. I think you're right about that, Tom. I think it was just a pitch that Billy Hamilton decided to run on.
Although if you were to think that there's one batter in baseball that would be an excellent hit and run player need control of the bat. Motto certainly has that but I doubt that they would ever ask him to do so. So far this year with runners in scoring position teams have chewed up top. Getting 457 against this Cleveland right hander thus far this year when runners move into scoring position that's the highest batting average against any pitcher in baseball. One and oh on Adam Duvall and a ball to strikes the other thing that Tomlin has is is just extraordinarily good control. He has walked two or fewer batters in 39 consecutive starts. That is a Cleveland Indians franchise record. Left hander Greg Swindell held that for a long time at 32. And he's had 24 starts going all the way back to the start of 2015 where he did not walk a single batter in a game. Mashed into left field. This will score Billy Hamilton. No throw. So Duvall a two out single and the Reds are in front one nothing. It looks like a, maybe a cut fastball that just rides right back over the plate. Tomlin has had a very difficult time figuring out where to locate that inside fastball. And that one just kind of lays right there for Duval. Didn't get a whole bunch of it, but plenty enough to get a base hit. And with Billy Hamilton, that's a guaranteed run batted in. So a real nice start here for the Red Legs. Feldman in a 1 2 3 top of the first inning, and now the Red score in the bottom half. It continues for Suarez. You know, you get back to the Tomlin's great control. You know, you don't last in the major leagues throwing 87 miles an hour without having superb control. And that's both in and out of the strike zone, meaning when he misses on a pitch, he doesn't miss over the center of the plate or else it's going to get whacked all over the park. You've got to miss and just miss inside or miss and then just miss outside. I don't know if this is a new approach we're seeing from Eugenio Suarez, but I, I can't remember him choking up before two strikes anywhere near this much until just recently. He's been yeah. watching some Joey Votto video. Well, we talked about it, you know, quite a bit over the weekend, and Suarez has really come alive here in the last four or five games. That one's in the air to center run down by Chisholm Hall, but the Reds score two hits, RBI by New Ball. One nothing runs in the Battle of the Buckeyes State.
Brought to you by Elk and Elk. Problems from the start. ERA of Major League Baseball starting teams. The Reds are highest. Look who's number four. That is the most unexpected of all, along with the Mets for that matter. Well, the Mets have had a hard time getting any kind of good pitching on a consistent basis. That's why they've got an 18 and 24 record. But I'm a little surprised to see that. I think that's one reason why people that follow the Indians say that they're really not have gelled yet. They should be getting Corey Kluber, their staff ace back in another week or so after he goes down and does a one more rehab start. Carlos Santana, the batter. This guy's put together a real nice career with the Cleveland Indians. Hit a career high 34 home runs last year, batting a lot in the leadoff spot, some in the number five spot. on Carlos Santana and it's rolled over foul Feldman coming off if you're just joining us a one two three opening inning striking out the side Santana normally shares time with Edwin Encarnacion at first and the other will DH we'll see that on Wednesday and Thursday night and there is strike three called and Santana who has a very good eye at the plate knew it Well, Feldman so far has been kind of stingy with that fastball, but look where he throws it. He gets Santana jumping out of the way, and it comes right back over and catches the inside part of the plate. It's about as good as it gets. It's interesting to know this Cleveland team, this is not normal for them. They have struck out the third fewest number of times of all teams in baseball so far this year. And Carnacio not happy with that pitch. Not at all. That's Will Little calling the balls and strikes tonight. Clint Fagan at first. Crew Chief Jared Kellogg at second. Tim Timmons, the umpire at third. Well, he hit a strike after strike for Feldman. Brandon Finnegan last August against Arizona on the 26th struck out. The first four batters in the game. Now we got to start digging around. It was the last to strike out five in a row to start a game. Joel Luckett just came back to work after about a month off, so he might have to work a little bit tonight. I mean, he's not messing around at all either. I mean, he's right on the edges of the strike zone, and that's a three pitch strikeout. So we got all three of the strikeouts in the first inning on curveballs and the strikeouts in this inning on the fastball. Strike one to count on Jose Ramirez. This guy really delivered the goods the second half of last year to claim a regular job and then had a dynamite postseason and off to a good start this year. Already 24 batted in. 280 average on base percentage up over 350. Good player. All right, Feldman now a strike away from fanning the side in each of the first two innings tonight. He rocks back, throws a left uh, leg in the air, and missed the inside corner. Two and two. What a job Terry Francona did in Boston. What a job he's done in Cleveland. So an Indian finally puts a ball in play. And this has hit a long way, but Billy will go get it. That ball is tailing away from him towards left center field. And he runs it down, leaving his feet to get it.
Mental Health Month this May. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and their commitment to replacing stigma with hope and improving the lives of families and those affected by mental health issues. Learn more how to be stigma free and visit Fox Sports Supports. Com. Reds one, Indians nothing. Game one of four, and make it two nothing. As Shevler drives one of the seats in right center field. Shevler has now homered in three straight games. Time he's ever done that in his career. Well, the, one of the additions they've done at Great American Ballpark is they've shown fans how fast the bat or the ball velocity coming off the bat is. And this one by Scott Chevler. Over 105 miles an hour. A bomb that he hits into right center field. We're going to go back to that catch by that fan in the stands. Oh boy, I hope the right fielder is okay there, Santana. We mentioned he doesn't play out there much. It's only the fourth career game for him. And that's the worst nightmare, really, for Terry Francona is, is to figure out where to keep a good bat in the lineup. But you're always wondering in the in your back of your mind, I hope he doesn't get hurt. And he went over there really very unsure of himself on a ball that was slicing into the stands. And you can just see by the his body language and he is he went into that thing hard this pad right here you know that's about a three and a half to four inch pad that is there's just concrete right behind it it is not soft at all not one bit of give you know you have the shoulder connect with the padded area and then there's cement maybe the last what four or five inches from the bottom. Let's see if his knee went slamming in there. May have been that too. You know how many times have we seen Jay Bruce over the years go down there and negotiate that foul territory and it takes a long time to figure out how, where you are how where the ball is how fast you're running what your angle is. And I got to tell you, if I'm managing a ball club and I'm putting a guy out there in a corner outfield or even a center fielder for that matter, who's not used to playing out here, no one ball, especially a foul ball, is worth losing him for an extended period of time by having him sacrifice his body by diving into a cement wall. It just doesn't make any sense. That's a good sign here. Santana up, moving around, and it appears as though he's going to stay in this game. Boy, show me something. It's a big leaguer. Ooh. He may end up with a stiff neck tomorrow, but he's staying in the game tonight. Great to see he's all right. Boy, get the tub ready. Jose Peraza, 252 batter. And they're striking on base percentage of 287 for Peraza. Saw him jump on a pitch over the weekend, and he absolutely hammered his first home run of the year. He's out on strikes here. And it's funny because we saw him hit so many balls hard, driving balls, last year, and so infrequent has that been this year. Oftentimes, just sort of serving balls the other way into right field. First strikeout of the night for Tomlin, one away. Reds leading 2 0 in the second inning. 
Tucker Barnhart down a strike. center field it's a nice running catch made by Chisholm Hall the converted third baseman two out and now the pitcher felt It's all, for, it's all, it's all for the Reds, but they get the home run by Shevler and lead at the end of two, two nothing. Part one here on Fox Sports Ohio before the game they were honoring once again the kid glove program for so many years they've been giving back to the community and the youth baseball in and around the Cincinnati area and I am my pleasure actually to bring in the executive director of the kid glove program he is Mr. Paul Kramer and it has been a long time we're talking this is the 68th consecutive season that you guys have been doing this and take us back to the roots of uh, how this thing started and where the mission started well, it started back in 1948 the first game was played 1949 the Reds used to give us scuff balls broken bats and things like that and then we met with uh, Gabe Paul 
who was the general manager of the Reds back then, not we, <laughs> my, my forefathers, yeah. and they in turn uh, said, let's get something going. So they started exhibition games. So from 1949 up to about 1985, we had exhibition games every year. Ironically, Cleveland Indians was one of our opponents every year. It's just grown from there. First year, we brought in $7,229. Two years ago, we brought in $384,000, all to buy equipment for the kids. That is unbelievable. And you have raised more than $10 million to buy baseball and softball equipment for more than 40,000 youths throughout the Cincinnati area. And uh, how did it start for you personally? I'll make a long story short if I can. I was, had my car repaired back in 1966, and I, I had to wait a while in the waiting room. There's another gentleman in there, and he started talking about the Reds and baseball. He said, you ever play not hole baseball? I said, oh, every kid play not hole baseball. He said, we're having a meeting tonight. We're looking for a supervisor. I thought I was off the hook because my car was being repaired. He said, I'll pick you up and take you to the meeting. So that's what it all started in March of 1966. And you have been at it ever since. It has to be a, a lot of pride inside of you. You've seen many, many generations come through this game of baseball and oh, how society has changed. To give these kids something to do by helping them with equipment has to be very, very, uh, brings a lot of pride to you. Yes, it does. It's a, people ask, why do I do it? I love the Reds, I love baseball, and I love kids. It's a great combination. Well, Tom and Chris, this guy is, uh, I'll call him an icon in the community because you know firsthand the Kid Glove program, one of the staples of Cincinnati Reds baseball through the years. There is no debate about, about that, Jim Day, and we certainly thank him for all the hard work he's done. A great job. I don't think the Kid Glove organization, it's actually called the Powell Crosby Jr. Amateur Baseball Fund would really it may not even be in existence if it were not for the efforts of Paul Kramer. He's the executive director now but that doesn't really give justice to how much work he gives and really puts back into it. Well, we're lucky to have him in, in our community and so many kids who have never met him. Should be thankful because uh, for a lot of them. All of his hard work has enabled both boys in baseball and girls in softball to be able to play each and every single year for a long, long time. 0 2 on Jan Gomes, but a monster game yesterday. Drove in five runs as the Indians finished off the Houston Astros three straight games. And they came away from that series saying the Astros are the best team they've seen all year long. Yeah. Without a doubt. Astros are 29 and 15. They were 29 and 12 before that series began. A kick save and a beauty. And then the glove feed. How about that? We've seen him do that before. The, the glove feed anyway by Feldman. That ball. It sounded like it hit him very hard. It could have got him on the bottom of the shoe. We'll take another look. Well, Jan Gomes is thinking I hit a ball about as hard as I possibly could hit it. And I'm going to try to beat it out for an infield hit before the guy plays high lie on me. Eight in a row retired by Feldman. And here is Tomlin, who does have two at bats. So far this year, he's 0 for 2. Elliot well, strike away from fanning seven of the first nine batters in this game. Elliot, two at bats this year, but he had five last year, and he has a bunch of hits, does Tomlin. He's going to pump that 429 lifetime batting average up a little bit with that hit. How about that? On a two strike pitch, just serves one in the right field, and he's the first Indians base runner of the night.
So now Feldman will pitch out of the stretch for the first time in this game. And the batter is a leadoff man, second baseman Jason Kipnis. Last year had to be quite odd for Kipnis. He's a young man we've talked about before, grew up in Chicago and grew up, you know, really cheering for the Cubs. It was well documented last year when the World Series began. All his family, they've been rooting for the Cubs for their entire lives. And here Kipnis comes rolling in, playing for a franchise trying to make sure the drought continue for the North Siders and try to win a World Series for a Cleveland franchise which is not won one since 1948. Feldman got a piece of that one and they'll get the out at first and that will end the inning. One hit one left middle of the third two nothing Reds in front. MLB.TV Premier, back better than ever. You can watch every out-of-market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices, and you get a free subscription to it back premium. Visit MLB.TV for details, and you know the drill. If a red hits a home run off the Toyota sign out in right center field, at least tonight, Chris Manning from Alexandria, Kentucky, just down the road, will win that beautiful new Tundra. And you can register for your chance to win in an upcoming game. Stop by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer. I'll tell you, we went out the other night with a few other couples over into Covington. First time I had been over there in a long time. And I got to say to the folks who are running that area over there and developing that area over there, boy, is that really, really, really nice over there. They have done a great job job I mean I know it's been going on a long time and I mean it's not like it's been years and years and years but it had been a little while and uh, boy with the way they're putting places up over there it's got to seem like every couple of weeks are opening up some new joint Hamilton aboard for the second time two for two night well, you'd like to see this swing out of Billy Hamilton more often would you waiting on the baseball using the other field Getting a ball down the zone rather than chasing something up that he works underneath and pops up. That was a little cat and mouse between Tomlin and Hamilton the first time. We'll see if it happens again here. You know, Tomlin does something in his stretch position that. It, it, it has begun to be allowed by Major League Baseball. And I had a Major League umpire tell me that, you know what, if I wanted to, I could call a balk on every pitcher out there. But watch Tomlin when he comes to the stretch and watch his, his front leg. And when he, get, he finally gets into a position where he fully stops, it's after he 
jiggles his leg a two or three different times. Watch his leg right here as he comes to a stretch right here and then stops. Move, move, move again. And I think that that is, is distracting and deceiving to the to the runner. But little by little, it's not only Josh Tomlin, but there's a there's a ton of pitchers out there that are doing that now. So if you're looking around for reasons why the running game is being shut down, look no further than the umpires not really enforcing the balk rule the way it should be. But in order to, for them to enforce it, you got to have the backing of MLB. Well, you're right about Tomlin. I mean, that should be a balk, and there is no question about it. That has to have something, if not an extraordinary amount, to do with his success in shutting down the opponent's running game. There's no doubt. I mean, that is a blatant balk. And I, I'm not sure whether you could call the balk on every pitcher. I mean, we watch a lot of guys that we don't see anything close to that. You know, Blake Wood is a guy that seems like he seems pretty close to being right on that fine line. We talked about that before. This might fall in. Well, what a catch oh by Mike Dora. Are you kidding me? Neither outfielder was anywhere close, and somehow he stayed with it and made the play. What a great play made by. Well, that, now I know why neither the left fielder nor the center fielder were really <laughs> hurtling that hard towards that spot because they knew Lindor would catch it no problem. That's the kind of catch we used to see out of Brandon Phillips all the time. Now Joey Votto the batter he bounced out when Hamilton was on the run from first to second in the opening inning. And by Hamilton running on that pitch they threw Votto out at first but Billy went into second. It allowed him to be there. In front of the Adam Duvall two out run scoring single. Red's got a home run by Shebler in the second two nothing here in the third. Almost looked like uh, Joey was doing a little bit of the two step right there, didn't it? <laughs> Looks like Tomlin just throws over. He's either throwing over on a signal from the dugout or the catcher. Or he's just throwing over based on a number of odds because he's thrown over a couple of times and Billy Hamilton hasn't even been off the bag. Lindor won't get this one, but Brantley will. And that will be the second out of the inning. Big birthday wish to a huge Reds fan watching tonight in Flatwoods, Kentucky, Robert Sloan. A happy 58th birthday tonight, lifelong Reds fan. We know his son Chris, he just won his second big AP award as a writer yesterday. Comes in to cover the Reds from time to time. Now Duvall with Hamilton at first and two away. Right up in the air and should be the final out of the inning. She's in all weights, and it is one hit, one left. We play three, the Reds lead by two.
assists so far. First red starter since Johnny Cueto in 2008. To strike out the first five batters of the game, he has struck out six through the front three innings. Has allowed one hit, no runs. Lindor's grip on the bat is really the opposite of what we noted about Suarez and of course Joey Votto choking up a good two or three inches. In fact, Votto more than that sometimes. But Lindor appears like, at least early in the count, that the bottom part of his hand is pinky finger actually hanging off the bat knob. We're way down there. Well, Lindor is the guy as far as the face of this Cleveland franchise. They signed him to a long term contract. He's just been an outstanding player. And they think nothing but great things are in the future for Lindor. Won his first gold glove last year at shortstop. Switch hitter. Decent power, runs well. Just a good all around player. Very good. in Florida so he was subject to the draft he did not go on that one he would be awarded first base but he was picked up by the Indians first round he was the eighth player taken overall in that 2011 draft and there were some pretty good players taken in that draft to start with Garrett Cole being the number one pick he's teammates with Trevor Bauer the third player taken in that draft Anthony Rendon was in that draft and Francisco Lindor one pick ahead of the Cubs and not the Cubs, but with Javier Baez. Like the Cubs did get Baez. Reds in that draft did not draft until the 27th pick. And that's when they chose Robert Stevenson. Want to know the count on. Michael Brantley. This ball driven hard into left field. But short of the track, it'll be caught by Duval. Well, there's no shortage of options for beer lovers here at Great American Ballpark. The Moreline Logger House Craft Beer Stands offers some of your local, regional, and national favorites. Stop by your next visit to the ballpark. Visit Reds.com for ticket information. It's a big league joint. So is that more lines restaurant right across the street over on the banks. That's where you were kind enough to help put together that lunch with the general manager Dick Williams during this offseason. I wouldn't call putting it together, but well, I. Well, you did a good job, kind of, you know, lassoing everybody. That was a nice day. Nice to get everybody together in the really middle of is. the year and and hear a little bit about the Reds. Uh, Dick Williams being very forthcoming. He you really broadcasters, is. and we really appreciate it. Yeah, we do because very much. you know you always feel like you 
you want to have a little bit of inside information. Of course, that comes with a certain amount of confidentiality. Sure. But, you know, there weren't any trade secrets being given away then, but it's nice to know what they were working on, what the plan was, and hopefully they're happy with the way it's beginning to roll out right now. And one on Santana. Big shift put on defensively by the Reds. They moved to Eugenio Suarez from third, basically to where a second baseman would normally play right now. They leave Cozart B. And they did that after one strike. So if Santana wanted, he would have been able to lay a bunt down the left side of the infield and grab a base hit. You don't expect them to do that on two strikes ever. But I would love to see a study that shows what the expectancy would be of a, of a major league player being able to lay down a bunt with two strikes and actually keep it fair. He'll be a free agent after this year, Carlos Santana will. Has never made the, the all-star team, did lead the league in walks about three years ago. Yeah, he was, you know, quite a lightning rod for many of the Indians fans because he would walk so frequently and people felt like he was capable of doing a lot more damage with the bat. There's strike three called. He didn't like that call. He's probably telling Will Will, I, I led the league in walks three years ago. I had 99 last year. I probably know the bottom of the zone better than you do. And he got a little right at the bottom of the zone by our Fox tracks. Kind of a cut fastball that nice reception there. A little frame action by Tucker Barnhart. When I say frame, I don't mean that he had to move his glove back into the strike zone. You just have to beat the ball to the spot so you catch it softly. Lindor only three stolen base attempts. He's two of three. And here's Encarnacion. Pitcher's got to like the strike zone working tonight, though. It's the way it should be every night. It is a no will little strike zone. Oh, that's really good. Wow. For those of you that don't know, that's his name, Will Little, and you're saying it's a Will Little strike zone. Very nice. You know, some of those you just have to kind of just let go. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Encarnacion is. Many, many, many of you know, signed with the Reds in 2001. That's not technically true. He came to the Reds after being selected originally by the Texas Rangers and then was traded for Ruben Mateo. So he was only 45 games into his Texas Rangers career when he was dealt to the Reds. He made it to the big leagues for the first time in 2005. And he would be a regular player in 2006, went up and down. 2007 at 16 home runs, knocked in 76. 2008 hit 26 home runs, knocked in 68. And then after a very poor start to the 2009 season. He was dealt to the Toronto Blue Jays. For Scott Rowland. Was sent along with pitching prospects Zach Stewart and Josh Renicky. Well, since leaving the Reds, this guy has hit 246 home runs. Only three players ever. As here's strike three called Encarnacion. 
And he's not happy with that call either. Eight strikeouts for Feldman. break brought to you by T-Mobile players of the week named today J.D. Martinez of the Tigers and Jake Lamb of Arizona boy uh, the, the Diamondbacks are one of the real surprise teams right now in all of Major League Baseball they thought they were going to be quite good I don't know if anybody thought they'd be seven games over 500 good the Tigers are an even 500 club at 21 up and 21 down. Reds bat here in the last of the fourth inning. They lead 2 0. Strike three to Suarez. So our big story of the night. We just saw the Colorado Rockies. They're the only team in that National League West better than Arizona right now. And they've got it going again. Charlie Blackman shoots one down the third base line. And that'll drive in a couple of runs. Two nothing Colorado. The game is now in the fourth inning. Rockies have a 3 nothing lead. It's an abbreviated schedule around baseball today and tonight. Pirates are in Atlanta. Giants an early 1 nothing lead batting at Wrigley Field. This one driven the other way. We'll back up Brantley to the base of the wall. Two outs off the bat of Shevler. And later tonight, Interleague Baseball, the White Sox will play Arizona. Red's got a single run in the first inning. Hamilton single to lead off the game, wound up at second with two outs. Duvall knocked him in, and then Shevler homered to right center field, leading off the second inning. Here's Peraza with two down and none on. Neither pitcher. I mean to work deep into counts a lot of guys up there swinging the bats here tonight and that one's in the air to shallow center it'll be a one two three inning for Tomlin on six pitches two nothing red.
the game. Scott Feldman knows the effect on it on the back end. He's been a bullpenner and a starter. Always want to go six, seven, eight, nine innings. So, um, you know, uh, just it does it does take its toll on the bullpen, which um, obviously just from a guy that's been in the bullpen before, I know what that's like. And um, you know, we don't we don't like to see that. And you look at the numbers since May 14th, and it's just not what you expect out of a major league starting staff. The bullpen, their numbers have been terrific, but those innings pitched, they just, just don't think they can keep up that pace pitching that many innings. And a guy like Scott Feldman, who's been around the block a time or two, knows that more than anyone. And we'll see if Feldman can step up tonight. And you know, so far, he has been sensational in this game. He faces Ramirez, Chisholm, Hall, Gomes. I mean, take a look at these numbers. In the last what eight days on his graphic seven days one inning five two and two thirds that one hooked down the right field line that is a fair ball by Jose Ramirez and he will coast into second base with a two base hit to begin the Cleveland fifth only the Indians second hit of the game. Well that graphic shows really how difficult it is to pitch in the major leagues and. You know, so many times you, you, you're judging pitchers by, you know, what their stuff is and what their potential is and what their ceiling might be if everything goes right. But the bottom line is, when you get up here and you have a, you have problems and you have flaws, you will get exposed, and that's what's happened to this Reds pitching staff. If you don't start throwing strikes and good strikes, you're going to get batted all over the ballpark. And the guys that the Reds have run out so far to date have to also understand. That the, the limited window opportunity for them to show their stuff. Because when they're starting pitchers who are by design to be in the rotation, Homer Bailey, Anthony Discafani, you know, Brandon Finnegan, when they get back, you know, you're gonna have Feldman and Men one other. And it, right now, of course, it looks like Amir Garrett. So everybody else who's been in and out and in and out. You're not going to have opportunities anymore unless you get them a little bit out of time in the bullpen. So this has been the kind of opportunity for so many pitchers that it just doesn't come around very often, but it did this year for the Reds. So if you happen to take advantage of it, like Amir Garrett has, hey, more power to you. If you've been unfortunate, have been injured, or didn't pitch very well during your time up here, you know, you can never say you didn't get your chance. One thing for Feldman so far tonight is that he has been very crisp with his breaking ball. In the first inning, he struck out all three batters on the breaking ball. The fastball was his weapon in the second inning. But always, the more a hitter sees you, the more you have to improve your pitches. Is he going to go on this? He is not going to go. Shoveler. A two hot throw right on the plate. And that's a huge out. But one more to go because the pitcher got a base hit his last time up. But a big out nonetheless for Feldman. Two away in the inning, and the runner stays at third base. It's an area where the Indians have really struggled. We talked about you know, some of their offensive woes and how. No one has really gotten going offensively. Look at those numbers so far. Last in Major League Baseball. Tomlin looped one over Votto's head for a single for the first Cleveland hit. The season average is one for three, but he came in batting a lifetime over 420. Limited work at the plate. But still, it goes to show you that he's the type of guy at the plate 
He's going to put the bat on the ball. In fact, the ball that he hit, the pitch that he hit off of Feldman for a base hit was a, a breaking ball down and away. Went right with it. Just under the knees. Two balls and a strike. It's a two nothing lead runner at third two outs two and one pitcher against pitcher here in the fifth Good fastball on the outside corner to even the count You can just tell that Tomlin's a confident athlete up there When he goes into a stretch position, he just he's an athletic looking guy and always in a good solid athletic position, even as a hitter. He doesn't look like some guys only getting a handful of bats every year. It's a bat on the ball. And thrown out by Kozart to end the inning. A leadoff double runner stranded at third. That's a two-nothing advantage. Theme ticket package for as low as $30. You can get a Reds ticket, a limited edition Marvel Iron Man bobblehead. Purchase the Marvel theme ticket package at Reds.com slash Marvel. What a beautiful shot that is. So much going on in downtown Cincinnati. See the banks who are just in the upper left hand corner there to the right of Paul Brown Stadium, the brand new General Electric building downtown. Their aviation headquartered here for so many, many years. And the little kids feel most important all. It's what it's all about down there. It's a wiffle ball little stadium. Looked like that kid just played long ball. Tucker Barnard to lead it off. Going to be followed by Feldman and then Billy Hamilton. Runs with single runs in each of the first two innings. And that's been it for either team thus far. Two hits for the Indians, two runs, four hits for the Red Legs. Look out. One of Cincinnati's finest able to duck out of the way of that one. Quick feet. That's a big leaguer. How about 
Tucker Barnard though on successive pitches a fastball inside pulls it foul down the right field line next pitch he goes away with him and he hits it very hard down the left field line both of them foul. Well placed pitches and good swings. Now he hooks one into right center field hit a long way and that ball's going to bounce up against the wall and Tucker Barnhart with a double to start the Cincinnati fifth inning. Well he went downstairs to get a low curveball right there Barnhart did. You know, even though he hit a fly ball out the first time up he hit it very well. And it just looks like Tucker's seeing the ball extremely well tonight. I thought that pitch may have been a little lower than it actually was. It ended up around knee high. Tucker bangs it off the center field wall or the right center field wall. So now Feldman's job is to get him to third. Scott has three sacrifices so far this year. It's not going to do it. I mean, nowhere close to the here. Well, you know what I didn't understand really about Feldman right there is that he kind of was going back between trying to fake the defense out that he was going to swing away or bunt. You know, as long everybody in the ballpark can know you're going to bunt as long as you bunt it hard down the third base line. He knew that was trouble right from the get go. And Tom, you were mentioning what an athlete that Tomlin is. He is. Played a lot of infield growing up. Well, he looks like, you can just tell, this guy was a ball player. You know, Chris, the, the Reds pitching staff has just had a woeful time trying to put down bunts this year. And you talk about it all the time. I mean, all the time you spend in spring training pitchers working on their bunting. But it's the way you're going about the practicing of it that you've pointed out so many times it. I mean Reds pitchers have seven sacrifice bunts for the entire year and Feldman has three of them. No other pitcher has more than one. And Feldman's been out there for nine starts so I mean it's not like he's tearing it up either. I never play. I've never stood in a batter's box and tried to put down a bunt, and obviously I never will. All I can go by, just like many of you at home, if you have a chance to talk to a, a former big league player, a pitcher, and I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that on a regular basis, and I hear all you guys say the same thing. It shouldn't be as hard as they're making it look. Well, I was a good bunter, but mainly because I worked on it. I wasn't afraid of the baseball, number one, and I learned fundamentals early on. And I really believe the only way you learn how to bunt is that you practice off live pitching. Because the machine just doesn't get it. It's just too consistent, it's too straight, it's too right down the middle every time, and everybody can bunt that way. Well, you give up a leadoff double and. Never even a whisper after that. Nothing. Two nothing. Red still leading. We go to the six.
brought to you by Cincinnati Children's, changing the outcome together. And by your local Ford dealer, Ford, go further. Always a special hello to those watching over at Cincinnati Children's tonight. Hoping and praying you're having a great day today. Coming up Wednesday on the newest edition of Reds Weekly. After being out for most of the last two and a half years, Devin Mezzarocco back. The Reds have had a few famous people at GABP this past week. The world's greatest eater and a rock and roll Hall of Famer. Jeff Pecora, Doug Flynn have that and more. It's a great show. It's called Reds Weekly. And it comes your way Wednesday at 6. That'll be before. Uh, actually, that's not going to be Wednesday at 6 this week. That's not right. We're playing baseball Wednesday at 6. On Fox Sports Ohio, right? We'll look into that. And we'll get you the right time. Probably at five o'clock is what I was thinking. Of course, there's a big time difference between here and Cleveland, so we always have to factor that in. <laughs> Top of the order. For the Indians here in the sixth, Reds two, Cleveland nothing. For those of you wondering what we're talking about playing baseball at six o'clock, the Indians are one of those teams, and we've talked about the idea for a long time here in Cincinnati. Well, the Arizona Diamondbacks started playing games during the week at 6:40 at night, and I think universally. They have found that the fans love it, players love it, and hard to find a quarrel with it. Well, the Indians have gone 30 minutes better than that in the months of April, May, and September. They are starting their home games in Cleveland at 6 10. So, when this series shift gears to Cleveland, Ohio, for games Wednesday and Thursday, Reds Live will begin at 5 30 Eastern Time, and our game coverage will start. At six. Ball hit hard. Deep right center field by Kipnis, and the Indians are on the board. Lead off home run here in the sixth inning. I think the Nat Kipnis goes way downstairs to just kind of golf that ball right out of here. That ends a scoreless inning streak of 14 in a row for Feldman here on the home turf. Just like that, a one run game, and here's Lindor. You see, the Reds have lost seven times of the nine starts Feldman has made this year. And you see the number of runs he had allowed and the number of innings pitched. In their two wins prior to this game, he had not allowed a single earned run, including a complete game shutout here in Cincinnati.
left field. This will be an extra base hit for Lee Door. So the Indians who went through the front five innings with only two hits, a single by the pitcher and a double by Ramirez, have homered and doubled to start this sixth inning. Well, what a bit of hitting by Lindor right here. This is a pretty good pitch. Well, maybe not really where he wanted it. He wanted it down and away. He gets comes up inside. I thought it was more outside, but he really battles it off and goes the other way. Very difficult guy to play defense on Lindor. One of the things they love about Lindor, outside of being such a really good player, is he's always smiling, bouncing around, seems to enjoy playing baseball. Here's Michael Brantley. Feldman's falling behind two balls and no strikes. Brantley is struck out swinging and flied out to left field. Well, those pitches that were right on the corner of the first couple of innings are just off the plate right now. I'm assuming Brantley swing here on a 3 0 pitch. Four pitch walk, second of the game given up by Feldman. First three have reached. After only three reach base in the first five innings, and now Mac Jenkins will make a slow walk out to the mound. Well, what you're really thinking about right here is damage control. But what always is in the back of your mind when you're playing the Indians is the fact that their bullpen is so good that you're trying to maintain the lead every inning you possibly can because now you're getting into the part of the game from the sixth inning on where they can if they needed to get their starter out turn it over to the most capable bullpen in baseball. Wandy Peralta getting it loose. Two on, nobody out, a run home. And pull to the right side, this should be two. And that's exactly what Felda needed there. Santana among the most deliberate hitters in all the base, patient hitters in all the baseball. And goes after the first pitch and a big time double play there for the Reds. You know, I'm wondering if maybe his two previous at bats had anything to do with that. He was called out on strike, Santana. In the second inning on a fastball, in the fourth inning on a pitch that he dotted, did not agree with, and he's probably telling himself coming up there, I'm not getting called out on this one. I'm going up there and I'm swinging the bat. And he rolled over on a changeup, and Feldman now can get out of this inning. Well, a big out to get an Edwin Encarnacion. Now he struck out swinging, but was unhappy about a strike one pitch early in that at bat. He was called out looking in the fourth, and he's angry about that call. I mean, he has been giving it to Will Little. 
ever since the first pitch in his first hit back tonight and it continues here in the sixth inning. You know Tommy mentioned what a great career Encarnacion had with the Toronto Blue Jays but it's easy to overlook the fact that after he played for them in 2010 they put him on the waiver wire and he was picked up by the Oakland A's and then they granted him free agency and he went back and signed with Toronto. That one hit eight miles. Wow I don't know if I've ever seen a ball go that far out of this ballpark that left the stadium. That might have banged off U.S. Bank Arena. Saw Feldman. Hook, hook, hook. Oh, it hit something in the back back there. It hit that tarp. How about that one? It left the building. Now they're asking him from the. The Indians dugout. Are you sure that was fair or foul? Oh, Dave was that ball tag. He wasn't taking a chance with that last pitch, was he? Start for Encarnacion after signing that big deal. And this one popped up in the foul ground that will get out of play. You know, it's interesting to know that you know he didn't play here all that long, but only two right-handed hitters have more home runs at Great American Ballpark than Edwin Encarnacion. Brandon Phillips and Todd Frazier. <laughs> Look at those numbers for Encarnacion in just shy of 1,000 games as a Toronto Blue Jay. Now, three All Star appearances, obviously, all as a Toronto Blue Jay, most recently last year. What a great bounce back inning for Feldman. Allowed a home run and a double and a walk, but got a double play by that man and then a strikeout to end the inning. today for the Reds Bowling Bash presented by Adams Recovery Center. Enjoy this special opportunity to bowl right alongside your favorite Reds players. Buffet dinner, 
Receive exclusive Reds swag and more. For additional information, visit Reds.com slash bowling. So with bowling in mind, let's go inside the mind. We ask the players, can you bowl? And if so, what's your best score? I'm a terrible bowler. I don't even, uh, I get like 100. I think my best game is like a 115. Which, I mean, it's not bad if you never bowl, but I definitely throw the straight balls down. I think I got 200 once. Yeah. I was on fire. <laughs> bowling is uh, one of my worst sports. Um, I hate bowling. At high school, I used to go all the time with some of my buddies. I, I think my best score is around like a 240, I think. So not many are great at it, but they'll have at it with the fans coming up with that Reds bowling bash as we go upstairs to a couple of Earl Anthony types. No doubt. Lefty Chris Welsh and right hander. The rat hander. Right hander, Tom Green. You know, Tom, I just found out, like within the last few weeks, that there's a left handed ball and a right handed ball. Did you know that about bowling? I did not, and I used to uh, announce a TV bowling show, the Huda Pole King yeah. of TV bowling. So that's why I really did my homework on that. <laughs> Too early in the morning for you to be doing your homework. I wish we could go back in the day and see Tommy Berman rolling into those Sunday morning affairs. Well, you know what? Truth be told, if you saw what I was wearing the night before on Saturday night <laughs> on the 11 o'clock sports over on Channel 5, there's a good chance you would uh, you wouldn't even have to turn it on the next morning. Two and two to Votto. Reds with a two to one lead. They get single runs in each of the first two innings. Ball hit hard to straight away center field, and that flies over the head of Chisenhall. And Votto with a two base hit to open the sixth inning. You know, we were talking earlier in the ball game, Tom, about choking up. We know Votto does it. Suarez is doing it. And he does it right here. It doesn't rob him of power at all. But I'd be interested to hear what Jim Day had to say. I think he talked with the batting coach Don Long a little bit about the whole idea of choking up and why some of the guys are doing that, Jim. Well, it's not a reluctance of players. It's just that they're not comfortable doing it. And Don cited the minor leagues where if it's not taught in the organization, guys have success to get to the major leagues, obviously in the minors. So the organizations just say, hey, don't change anything. They're, they're going good. So it's not that they don't want to do it. They don't feel comfortable doing it. But Don Long has set out to work with these guys over and over in the cage in batting practice to choke up and get comfortable with it. And guys like Suarez and Shepler are finally comfortable enough to try it in games. But he's been preaching the benefits of it. And now they're seeing the benefits on the field. We might see more doing it. Hey, Don Long's done a nice job since the Reds brought him on board. Four season in the organization. He was a minor league hitting coordinator for three years for the Atlanta Braves after his three year stint as the Pirates major league hitting coach. Has 11 years of minor league managerial experience all in the Angels organization. In fact, three times he won a manager of the year award. I can see that. I could see him too being a major league manager. Sharp guy. Good guy. Very soft spoken. Not the kind of guy to make you hear his opinion over and over again. If you want to listen to him, he'll tell it to you. He's just an easygoing, likable guy. And you can understand how he would be able to connect with so many of these young or not so young Reds hitters depending on who he's working with. Got to know his family very well over the last couple of seasons. The long family. And the Benavides family, for that matter, they used to travel quite a bit on the Reds team charters. Don's wife, Diane, and son, Stuart, Preston, and Tyler were 
semi regulars. Votto at second, a double to start the sixth inning. Went after the high fastball. Four strikeouts for Josh Tomlin. Kind of just goes to show you well placed fastballs. Really doesn't matter what the speed is. It certainly helps if you throw 98 instead of 88, but that last fastball is right by Duval at 88 miles an hour. Not a bad seat in the house, is there? No, that's it. Uh... It's in the upper left field corner. That's a great spot and that's one of the newer areas of the ballpark that opened last year and part of it can be rented out for a, an individual group and then the back part of it which looks back into the city is more of a, a bar that you can overlook downtown. It's a really cool area out there. Well, I think the Indians have figured out that Suarez is an awfully good low ball hitter because you saw where the last two pitches are. Tomlin has just gone after him. Fastballs up and in. Let's call that Phi Optics bar that they opened up there last summer. Low and to the count on a Eugenio Suarez. And a looper into right field. A diving catch is made and Votto is long gone. He'll be doubled up. Presented by authority of the Cincinnati Reds, it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Right around the corner, the Memorial Tournament presented by Nationwide, coming to beautiful Muirfield Village Golf Club outside Columbus, May 29th through June the 4th. Order your badges right now at memorialbadges.com. Well, you make the decision at home. When the question is asked, are you surprised Scott Feldman is taken out of this game? He allowed a home run and then a double and a walk to begin the sixth inning, but he followed that up with a double play ball and a strikeout, his ninth of the game. Well, he threw 98 pitches, so I don't think it had anything to do with the the pitch count. I think it might be just a matter of 
trying to go now when you have a one run lead against the Indians to try to hold it right there your best shot maybe in the eyes of Brian Price go to the bullpen Wandy Peralta comes on. As a reliever. Earn run averages can be very unforgiving. Peralta before his last outing against Colorado on the 19th had an earned run average of 1.0 after he gave up four earned runs in an inning in which the Rockies scored six. His earned run average ballooned by two whole runs per nine innings. Went from 1.0 to 3.0. But we know how good he has been. He has been simply sensational outside of that game here over the weekend. And a ground ball at the second baseman Peraza is out number one here in the seventh. Coming up later, we'll have our Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Life. Two runs, six hits for the Reds. They've left three on base. Indians have one run on four hits, and they've stranded four. Here's Chisenhall, who has struck out and bounced out to Peraza. There's action in the Reds' bullpen. Michael Lorenzi, you see Iglesias now beginning to start stretching out a bit. You know, not only did Peralta give up those runs over the weekend, but it was the most pitches he had ever thrown in an appearance. So even if the Reds needed him yesterday, and of course they wouldn't get the lead in that game after Colorado, you know, jumped all over the Reds after a one-nothing deficit, the Rockies the rest of the way, you know, they went two-one-two-one, six runs over a four-inning stretch before the Reds mounted a slight comeback. But had the Reds had the lead in the game yesterday, there he is. Or in the game on Saturday, which they rallied, of course, very, very late, but they had the four run lead, Peralta would not have been available. I'm not sure he'd have been available yesterday. I think you're probably right. Two and two. Just off the outside corner. It's a big pitch right here. You got a left handed batter against a lefty Wandy Peralta. Jan Gomes waits in the on deck circle. Got him swinging. Now, this is the pitch really that has made the big difference for Wandy Peralta this year. The slider to add to the, the very good fastball and plus changeup that he already had. And you've got to give credit to a number of those pitching coaches down the Reds Meyer League system for helping Peralta develop that pitch. Because that's really what has bridged him from being a good Meyer League pitcher with a potential to a dominating major league pitcher. Center field off the end of the bat, and one deep Peralta does his thing. A one, two, three, seven. Good game here tonight. Reds in front, two to one.
every game on Fox Sports Ohio. We call it Reds Live. It's presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing. Take a look at tomorrow's matchup. Amir Garrett, after such an extraordinary start to his major league career, a couple of hiccups here. His last down, he gave up five runs in the opening frame in Chicago, got the loss in that game. Carlos Carrasco has not been at 100% since leaving his last, well, two starts ago. We'll see what he has tomorrow night. Very talented pitcher is Carrasco. And we know about Amir Garrett, how good he can be. It's a good matchup tomorrow night. So Reds live 6:30. Game coverage begins at 7. Boy, Shambler has seen three pitches and three at bats and hit each one of them hard. Hit a home run on the very first pitch he saw at the start of the second inning. Fly out the center and rip that one foul just off the tarp. You may say he's seeing it real big off of Josh Tomlin tonight. Well, he went after a pitch up in the zone there and couldn't get on top of it. Pops it up right at the second baseman Kipnis. And that's the way we start here in the bottom of the seventh inning with the Reds leading two to one. You know, this is going to sound like maybe a typo. But Josh, you know, there is such thing as being an efficient pitcher. And then there's being a real efficient pitcher. Josh Tomlin comes into this inning. Now he's already thrown two pitches. 63 pitches total through the first six. And this guy can pitch all night. And clearly he, you know, he always has great control. We brought up earlier that he's gone a franchise record 39 consecutive starts walking two or fewer hitters. Well, it it's it's one thing runs. not to walk by, but I mean his location tonight is such he's just I bet you he'll say after the game it's as good as it's been all year long. Because guys are just not squaring him up. Well, there's got to be a little deception there when you're throwing 87 miles an hour, even if you throw it anywhere in the zone. Reds have 24 batters that have come to the plate in this game. 18 of them have seen three or fewer pitchers, pitches in their at bats. So this is pitch number five. This has got to be considered one of the long ones. He did give up 36 home runs last year, Tomlin did. But that's a trade off, I guess, from not walking anybody. I imagine most of those are solo shots. Crotty's neighborhood. Yep. Line into center field. That'll be a base hit by Peraza. You're talking about Bob Crotty. He is the owner of that. Incredible facility up in Montgomery, the Green Diamond Gallery. They had Randy Johnson speak there last week. And for those of you that you know have never had a chance to visit there, outside of the the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, I'm not sure there's any other venue in the United States or, for that matter, in the world that has more rare baseball pair, uh, memorabilia. Then is owned by the Green Diamond. In fact, they loan a great deal of memorabilia to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, it's a spectacular place if you're a baseball fan at all. Now, it's a private gallery, but there are from time to time opportunities for the general public to be able to, you know, take a tour through there. And it is well worth it. But they bring in Hall of Fame caliber speakers. Once a month. Well, and generally they're all Hall of Famers. Yeah. 
not just even uh, you know from time to time it won't be a guy who's in yet I know they just had uh, Daryl Strawberry in a, a few weeks ago but uh, Randy Johnson was there and I heard he was just great the other night ever since retiring he's become so much more personable after a guy who was extremely reserved runner goes and is shot into left center field by Barnhart what a beautiful piece of hitting by Tucker Barnhart and the Reds have him on the corners uh, he and Tucker Barnhart and Scott Shevler tonight have had some really good swings off of Josh Tomlin. Barnhart especially. He had a double his last time up. Look at him going the other way with that. Elevated a little bit, made it easy on him, at least put the bat on the ball, but boy, he stayed behind it. You can't do it any better than that on a hit and run. I really like the fact that the Reds are putting the runner in motion and, and putting that play on. I think it's a great play if you have the right combination of, of hitter and runner out there. Well, that's going to be all four. One the Peralta. Reds are going to go to their bench and bring up Avi Smendi Alcantara. He got the start, a rare start. In the game yesterday, wound up going 0 for 4. He started at second base. He only had one at bat left handed yesterday. You see his pinch hitting numbers rock solid. Infield drawn in for the Indians. Runners on the corners, a very fast runner at third in Peraza. Now the Indians are in kind of a prevent defense here meaning that they want to keep the infield in but they're close enough at the bag at second base to turn a double play if they get a ground ball that's hard enough. It's a great first pitch to a pinch hitter right there he's coming out of the on deck circle looking for a fastball and you drop the old do drop in on him on the first pitch. Runners on the corners, one out. Reds trying to add to a two to one lead, and he pulled a squeeze, and Alcantara delivers the goods and ends up. He's on his way to second base, and on the third goes Barnhart. How about that? Well, there's one guy they can ask to put it down. Three to one Reds. Beautifully done. Well, he waits until the very last second right there, and I got to figure that was probably a safety squeeze because Peraza doesn't come down doesn't come down the line until he sees that ball on the first base side of the diamond, and that's exactly where you want to put it on a safety squeeze, not through the third baseman, but down the first base line because there's no way the first baseman, if he's holding a runner anywhere close, is going to be able to. You get there to field the ball. Good perfectly for that man. I'll tell you what, in this inning, we've seen a perfectly executed hit and run play. A really good two strike hit by Peraza to start it all. And that little great butt right by Alcantara. Good fundamental baseball. Yes, very, very good. This will be our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. We'll tell you about the new Indians pitcher. When we return, Reds try to tack on to this 3 1 lead when we return.
this seventh inning. Gave up a Peraza single, hit and run single to Barnhart. Bunt hit to drive in a run. Bradley Zimmer takes over in center. Part of a double switch as the Indians go to their bullpen and bring on a guy been around forever, Boone Logan. You know, you look at the workloads for Boone Logan over the years, and I mean, it's amazing how many games he appears in year after year after year. This is his 21st game. He's almost appeared in every other game the Indians have played so far this season. Big strong arm left hander from San Antonio, Texas. Field in. Hamilton turns around about right handed. Two out of three tonight. A pair of singles and a run scored. So Tomlin goes six and a third innings. He really pitched well. He did give up nine hits. Did not walk a batter fan four. But that line of his could get ugly if Hamilton can drive in a couple. And oh, it hits a runner. And he was in foul territory. Foul ball. I thought that may have hit Tucker Barnhart while he was in fair territory. You saw Lee Dorn run over there and say, hey, wait a minute now. And I think the umpire's going to. No, he's just marking the spot. All right. Tucker clearly in foul territory right there. And that's Tim Timmons. Makes the call immediately. Well, that had to hurt a little bit too now. They get him on the right knee. Left knee. Ball two strikes runners at second and third with one away and he takes that one off the inside corner count even to Hamilton Billy so far this year as a right handed batter is hitting 229 with an on base percentage of 229 left handed hitting 269 with an on base percentage of almost 340. So he hits better and he gets on base more. So far this year is a left handed hitter and that's a big strikeout for Logan. Two outs in the inning. And he went and teased Billy Hamilton with a little slider down in the dirt and Billy could not hold back. So they're going to make another pitching change. Logan retires the only batter he faces, striking out Hamilton. And now they bring on Dan Otero.
confidence in his bullpen. That's in all the Major League Baseball. Number one opponent's batting average, perfect in save chances, fourth most strikeouts per nine, number one ERA. And now Dan Otero. Well, uh, the side arming right hander right here. The last two guys he brought in, kind of specialists right there. 15 games now for Otero. He throws a lot of strikes. And he gets a lot of chases out of the zone. And look at this, a bouncer into center field on the first pitch will score two runs. What a big hit by Cozart, he's been doing it all year long. Five one, Reds in front. Boy, is that a huge hit right there. You talk about a pick me up for a ball club. Who have done everything right in this inning offensively, you could ask them to do. But you top it all off with a two out base hit up the middle. Votto, one for three in the game. He had a double in the sixth inning. A three run seventh for the Reds to take a two to one game to a five one game. Three balls, two strikes on Votto. Cozart with two outs takes off, and there's whoa, strike three. Votto thought it was ball four, and he is rung up to end the inning. But what an inning! A hit and run, a squeeze, a two out, two run single, 5 1 lead.
The game summary right from the get go. Red scoring in each of the first two innings. And the second, Shepler played long ball. First time in his career, three straight games with a home run. But then in the seventh, squeeze play after an executed hit and run. And then with two outs against a new reliever, Kozart bounces one into center field, driving in a pair. Three runs in the seventh. And a 5 1 lead in Feldman. Pitched so well here tonight. Yeah, he did, and he pitched a very strong six innings, went right about 100 pitches overall. Early on, he was completely unhittable, had a very tight breaking ball. And the Reds have hung right in there. They've only scored one time the Indians have. One solo home run by Jason Kipnis in the six has been all they have to show for their offense. All right, Michael Lorenzen now takes over on the mound. Following a perfect inning. From one D Peralta, and he faces Bradley Zimmer, who came into the game as part of the double switch a moment ago. Zimmer, Kipnis, lean door. Fly ball to left field, long run, and that's going to fall in a hit. So Zimmer bloops one in there to start the Cleveland eighth. Getting this homer to right center field his last time up. This one in the air will stay in the park, and that's out number one with Lindor coming up. Lindor, Puerto Rican by birth, but went to high school in Florida. One of the great high school players in the country his final year. Moved to the Orlando area when he was and went around 12 years old. And pitch in the dirt and blocked nicely there by Tucker Barnhart. You know, we heard so much about him coming up through the Indians organization when he was, you know, a teenager. Yeah. And he really wasn't in the minor leagues all that long. He was there for about three and a half years. Brought him up in 2015 in 99 games that year. Once they brought him up, he was there to stay, as they like to say. I mean, he just had an incredible. Final 100 games of that year lined in the right. Shevler going to try to double up the runner. And not in time. Very close. I thought we were going to see our second tooth blind of the night. Shevler catches it, throws it on the run. Just a little off the mark, that's all.
Well, Lindor was an all-star in his really first full season as a major leaguer at 22 years old. That will not be the last time. No. So here's Michael Brantley now with two away. They kept hoping Brantley was going to make it back last year. And just never fully gained traction. He was limited to 11 games at the major league level. He had two stints on the disabled list. In fact, he did not play a single game after May the 10th. So here he is a year later. His season was over this time last year. Yeah. Injured the shoulder originally. The final week of the 2015 season, diving for a fly ball at Minnesota's target field. Base hit left field. Now when he's right, he's a doubles machine. In that year, that 2015 year, he led the American League in doubles with 45. Had 45 the year before that, the year in which was an all-star. Well, you don't write this Indians offense off. Well, now Mac Jenkins, this time he's going to run out. Tell you what, he wins that race moving like that against Basio. Yeah, but he's run out of gas here. <laughs> Man, that's cold. Well, I'm not saying Basio could make it all the way without a rest either. I still want to see it happen. Well, I don't think we'd have to worry about insurance policies <laughs> like we would. <laughs> John Ross of the Bengals and Billy Hamilton. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> these guys might be harder to insure. <laughs> yeah, I think you're on to something I, there now. I, I think it's downhill, though, from the <laughs> pitching mound of the dugout. Yeah, it's got a little arc to it, right? Fields used to have those. Boy, Wrigley, they had a big one there for a long time. <laughs> All right, it's a big batter in this game now. Reds leading 5-1. to one. Ball one on Santana. Take a look at the power guys in the middle, Santana and Encarnacion. 0 for 6, 5 strikeouts, and the double play was the biggest out maybe of all of them. That was a 2 to 1 game, first and second, nobody out. Santana hit into the double play. Lorenzo knocks it down, slows it down enough for Cozart. And that'll end the end. We're off to the bottom of the eighth. Reds lead 5 1.
the Rebs. They take on the Atlanta Braves. You can be here for as low as twelve dollars. The first twenty thousand fans in attendance receive an Anthony D. Sclafani bobblehead thanks to Ram Trucks. For tickets, visit Reds.com. It's a very short homestand for the Reds. Five games, and of course tonight is the fourth. Tomorrow, the final game on it. Then they'll go to Cleveland for two games. They'll go to Philadelphia for three, Toronto for three before getting back on the home front. We've seen Tomlin, Boone Logan, Dan Otero, and now we see Sean Armstrong. Well, Armstrong, a little less used than the other guys that we have seen in this ball game tonight. Ten games last year. This is his eighth game. Right-hander from. Vance Burrow, North Carolina. Backing up on it is Santana, who has stayed in this game since crashing into the wall and foul ground very early on in this one. And we mentioned it's only the fourth time he's ever played the outfield. He'll either be the DH or the first baseman when we get to Cleveland on Wednesday night. He might be the first baseman tomorrow. He may tell Edwin Encarnacion, your turn to hit the right field. <laughs> Now Suarez against Armstrong here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Reds with a 5-1 lead. Reds lost the seven consecutive games, as you know, before winning a thriller here on Saturday, coming from behind. And then lost yesterday, 6-4, dropping two out of three to the Rockies. This will be the second out of the year. Shoveler coming up. Following each and every Reds game right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Stick around for Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. We'll break it all down. Jim Day standing by. In fact, Jim already on his way to the Fox Sports Ohio condominium. Jeff Pacoro. On his way shortly to the Reds clubhouse where they're hoping to to be celebrating a win here tonight. It would be their 21st win of the year against 23 losses. You know, if the Reds can hang on to win this game, you know, when all is said and done, and you, know, you have the seven game losing streak, which clearly you know, it took you from being a team well over 500 to well under 500. It's pretty amazing they are where they are with this starting pitching and the numbers being what they are. So now they have a chance to close it out. Three outs away from a game one win.
Lincoln Ohio we invite you to join us Reds and the Indians Reds live begins our coverage at 630 on the home of the Reds Fox Sports Ohio and streaming live on Fox Sports go all right three outs to go and even though this is not a safe situation with the Reds leading five to one they're going to bring in the man who's become their closer Lysel Iglesias. Now, they pitched a couple of days ago, Iglesias did, so he ought to be well rested enough. Every other number that he's got up there is somewhat bodacious. Earned run average under one. Opponent batting average around 150. Got the bottom half of the lineup to work with. Lysel to face Encarnacion. That was a cross up. Yeah, no kidding. I'll tell you what, it was a miracle that Tucker Barnhart even got his glove up for that. That was headed directly for Will Little's solar plexus. Field corner off the bat of Encarnacion, so after striking out three times in his return to Cincinnati tonight, and he's been here before as a visiting player, but now as a member of the Indians, he has a double to start the Cleveland night. You know, sometimes when a guy hits a ball the other way, they go, oh, great job, stay behind the ball, drive it the other way. Then there's another time when you hit the ball the other way simply because you're late in getting the bat on the ball. That was the case right there. I think Encarnacion was even surprised himself that ball stayed fair. Steve Reich one on Jose Ramirez. Ramirez lined out to center on a diving catch by Hamilton back in the second inning. He doubled to right and bounced out to second. Strike three call to Ramirez. Out number one here in the ninth inning. Uh, Scott Feldman had nine of them strikeouts at it. Wandy Peralta struck out one in the seventh of his one, two, three inning. And here is Red strikeout number 11. That is the fifth caught looking strike out of the night.
one and one the count on Roberts in the pinch hitter. One at second, one out. Reds two outs away from an opening game win in the first of four against their rivals to the north. Iglesias drops down there with a 96 mile per hour fastball and a bit too high. You know, a lot of times when pitchers drop down, they actually lose velocity a little bit. You don't see that with Iglesias. He keeps the gas coming. Strike three call, no debate about that one. Indians down to their final out. Nothing in one on Jan Gomes. Gomes knocked in five runs, third time in his career high. He had knocked five runs in in a game, career high. He may have hit the hardest ball of the night for the Indians when he hit that ball off the shoe of Scott Feldman. Feldman knocked it down, ended up scooping it up and getting Gomes out of first base. One one pitch started two. they appealed no. So now two and two on Gomes. And the crowd anticipating the final strike and out. Breaking ball in the dirt. Giants all over the Cubs tonight. Five to nothing. Well, that Giant team ever since winning that 17 inning marathon against the Reds a week ago last Friday have just been playing lights out. Two on goes in the air. Right center field. Billy chasing. Billy's there. Game over. Reds are five one winners in the opening. Great pitching tonight by the quartet of Feldman, Peralta, Lorenzen, and Iglesias. They combined to limit the Indians to one run on seven hits. And the Reds win it 5-1 the final score. More to come in a moment.